Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. I've got my typical dev setup going for here and there's going to be a card up in the corner to get the same dev setup going for you. So today let's jump right in. We're going to be talking about databases and one of my favorite databases is LevelDB. And the reason is, is because it's so super simple. It's just absolutely simple. I mean, if, if you want to get level DB and you have uh, Node.js already installed, it's as simple as typing npm install level and then you can optionally save it to your package JSON by doing dash dash save and then that's it. You have it. There's, there's no server you need to run. There's no service you need to start up. You don't need to put anything. Uh, you don't need to do anything. You just install it and it's there and it's ready to use. Now to use LevelDB, it's also very simple. So I'm going to go here to my index.js file and I'm going to use the package by typing in require and the package name level and give it to this variable. And this variable is a function that we can call to create a database. So I'm going to create another variable here called db, call this function. And I'm going to supply a path. I'm putting dot slash because I want it to run relative to when I run the script. Uh, so I'll just put it in this local folder here. Um, and then uh, I'm going to name the folder just db. So when I go to my terminal here and type node index.js and runs this, it's going to create this db folder that has all the, the database stuff um, that we can ignore and we can just let it do its thing and interface uh, with the database using this, uh, this db um, variable right here. Okay, so let's put some data in this database. And so to do so, we use uh, a method called put. And put your, the first two arguments uh, are gonna be the key. So this is what we're gonna use to reference the data or pull it out later. Um, and then the next one is gonna be the value. And so we'll say uh, bear here. Uh, you can see, you can kind of pretend like you're, you're basically assigning a, um, a, a variable here. Uh, you know, we're, we have a key animal being assigned to this value. You can, you can kind of picture it the same way that we have this key assigned to this string uh, bear here. And then when it's done, it's going to call this uh, callback uh, function here. And if there was a problem, it wasn't maybe it didn't have permissions to insert in the database or something went wrong. It's going to throw this error or, uh, or rather give this error here into the callback. Otherwise, if everything is good, then uh, we can assume at this point, uh, this point uh, animal now equals bear uh, right here. So we're going to save this and then we're going to go to our terminal and type in node index to run it. And nothing's going to happen, but we know that it has successfully put in uh, bear into the key animal. And so to demonstrate this, we can try to pull it out. Maybe sometime later, we, we know we need to pull out this, uh, this animal uh, data. And so what we can do, this very same thing, we can say db.get and we supply the key that we want to get. And then what this is going to do is going to call this callback with uh, an error if maybe it had a trouble getting getting this key or for whatever reason. Otherwise, if it has this key, uh, we can console log it out. And so as you can see here, uh, we are no longer putting it into the database because we already put it in the database the last time we ran this script. So it should be permanently stored in our database now. So when we call it, uh, we should get a uh, an output here. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and run node index again. And as you see, we get the value that we, stare, we, we stored uh, the last time we ran the script. So our data is permanent. So now maybe sometime later, we don't want that value uh, stored permanently. Uh, and so deleting is just as simple here. Uh, we say db.del for delete, and we supply the key name. And it's gonna call this callback if it has successfully deleted it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this uh, get call within the uh, the callback here. So after it's deleted, we're going to try to get the animal and you can see that uh, it won't work because we've deleted it. So let's go ahead and run the script with node index.js and you see uh, our, uh, our value is now undefined because we deleted it. So now maybe you want to store uh, something a little bit more robust than just uh, strings here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this out and uncomment this put call. Uh, what we can do is, is uh, there's a second um, options argument uh, that we can supply when we're creating the database and we can specify, specify a value encoding. And so this is the encoding we want to use 
uh, when storing values. And by default, it's UTF-8, uh, which is just these strings uh, with this encoding here. Um, but instead, we can use uh, JSON. So instead of saying bear here, uh, we can get a little bit more, uh, we can add a little bit more to it and provide this object here. So we can say type equals grizzly, and then name, I don't know, Steve's a good bear name. And so uh, what we're going to do is when we get this, so after we've put it in here, we'll just say db.get, we'll get the animal, and it'll be air, otherwise the animal it's given us. And so we can see here, like, okay, now, now that we've put this animal in uh, and we've pulled the animal out, we could say, okay, what was this animal uh, animal.name here? Uh, hopefully it should be Steve when we run it. Uh, let's double check. And there it is, yes, it's Steve. So what we've done is we put in this object here, which has converted it to a JSON string. And then when we get the, uh, the value out of it, it's gonna convert it back into a, a JavaScript object for us. So you're probably thinking, wow, this is a really simple solution, but with all that simplicity, that means I'm gonna have to write a whole lot of code to add the, the functionality and the features I want. And you're absolutely right. But the great thing about LevelDB is it has a great thriving ecosystem with lots of modules that already do a lot of the common behaviors that you would expect from a DB. Uh, so one of these is uh, level sublevel here. So I'm gonna go to my terminal, I'm gonna type npm level dash sublevel and save that to my dev dependencies. And what sublevel will let us do is it will let us organize our, our uh, our database by type here. So I'm going to require this uh, this module here. And what it what it does is it extends our original database and adds its own kind of flavors to it. Uh, so I can just wrap this in sublevel here. And we now have a sublevel flavored uh, database here. And so with this, what we can do is we can create a separate separate database types that will uh, be each self-contained. So we can say var bears uh, db equals uh, db, and we'll call this sublevel to create the sublevel, and we'll name it bears here. So we're creating, we're basically creating a database within a database, uh, a sublevel uh, named bears here. And then uh, say regions db, I'll say sublevel, and we'll name that regions. So we've just created two databases within it. And so now what we can do is we can create uh, a, a region here. So we'll say put, and we'll say North America for the key. And we'll specify the name here. So we'll say North America. And this will call this callback function when it has finished here. And so then now we can go into our bears database and we can put in our individual bear here. So we'll name him Steve and the type of bear he is is a grizzly uh, and he's from the region uh, North America. And I'm going to use the same key to match this because this is the region that he belongs to. Uh, and so we'll just say function. That function will be called when it's done. OK, let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. So let's run the script and put this data into our database here. So say node index and no output as we're expected. But now we have a key with North America in our regions database uh, that has this, uh, this object in it, or this JSON rather. And then we have a bears database with a Steve in it with this, uh, this data in it as well. So now we can, uh, sometime later uh, on, we can go ahead and query our database and pull out the data that we want in the, uh, the organization that we desire. And so I want a bears array that has all the bears with the regions associated with them. And so we can query our bears database here and we can say create read stream here. And this is going to give us a stream of bears. And if you're not familiar with Node.js uh, streams, there'll be a card up in the corner with a video I did earlier about all about Node streams. So I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, but what the stream is going to do is that it's going to emit this data event, and this data event will be each item in our um, in our bears database here. And so we can log this out and take a look at what this uh, this looks like. And it's going to be a key value. Uh, so the key is Steve, and the value is the the value that we've put in there. And so with this, uh, we can then uh, we can access this uh, region key to to grab the region that we want from the regions database. So say regions DB get, we'll say bear value region, and this is this uh, region that we placed in here. 
And so once it's gotten, it's given a, got that region, it will call this call back here. And so now we can simply, uh, instead of this, this being a, a string key of, of that, uh, we can reassign it here to the region that is in the database and then push on uh, this bear value here to push it onto uh, our bears array here. And so then uh, once the stream has finished or it has closed here, it will call this, it will rather emit this close event. So say on close, once the stream is closed, we can now console log out all our bears. And hopefully we should see uh, uh, an array of bears uh, with the type and then now the region is populated with the actual region here. So now comes the especially cool part. So you've gone through and you've wrote all this code, this, this server-side database code, but now you want to use it on the client side, uh, like such as with like an offline app or, or something. Uh, but making a few modifications, we can run the same code completely in the browser, where instead of saving to this uh, database folder here on the file system, it will save in index dot, or indexdb uh, built into Chrome. And fun fact, uh, LevelDB was developed by Chrome uh, and is also used as the backend for IndexedDB, which is built into Chrome. So it's coming full circle here um, uh, of using DB. So the first thing is Level here is a package. It's a convenience package for two other packages, Level Up and Level Down. Uh, level down um, handles all of the interfacing uh, with the the file system here and and the and level DB down here uh, and level up provides us with the the API and so what we want to do here is we want to type npm install uh, level up and level down to install these uh, these packages explicitly instead of having it uh, as a convenience through just the package level. So now that has finished, we just need to make a few modifications here. So instead of level here, I'm going to be doing uh, level up uh, to use the, the API uh, for this. And then uh, here in our uh, options here, we need to uh, explicitly define, by, by default, it's going to use level down um, as the database interface. Uh, but we're just going to explicitly require it here. So we'll say level down. And so this is going to say, okay, use this database as use this as the interface to the actual level D database, and then use level up here as the actual API. And so we just need to change that to to level up to match this. Um, and so now all our code should run just the same as it always has. So if I do node index here, we get uh, our same output, and it's still running through um, this uh, file system database. But now we can replace level down with another interface that will interface with uh, IndexedDB instead. So I'm going to type npm install level dash js and save that to my dev dependencies. And we are going to run this. Uh, we're going to replace level down here uh, as our database interface with level.js instead. So now we can fire up our server uh, running npm start to have Budo Browserify and uh, compile everything on demand as we request it from the server. So I'm going to go to here to my terminal and I'm going to type npm start to get that started. Now it's important to know that this database is, uh, although it exists here on our file system, it doesn't yet exist here in the browser. Uh, so the first time we run it, we need to put data into it by calling this first. So I'm just going to comment this out and then uh, have it put this database in. So if I go here to my browser and I refresh, you can see here in our resources index.db, uh, it's using the dot slash uh, database. Uh, and, but instead of the file system here, it's using index.db or index.db. And so uh, you can see here that it's actually putting in the values that uh, we're, we have it here. And it's, it's in the browser now. And so now using the same code, we can comment this out and uh, uncomment this. And we should hopefully get the same output in our console here instead. And so as you see here, we get an object. And within this object is or this array uh, is an object. Uh, with the type grizzly and our region North America, just as we got on the server. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool having the same code running on the server side and the client side. And the only thing that needs to change is this one little line here uh, to change between level down and level JS. In fact, let's just be smart about it and by default uh, use level down on the server. And then here in our package JSON, let's go ahead and add a um, a browser key that browserify will use and read 
uh, to provide an alias, so let's say level down. And when we're using Browserify or when we're compiling things for the browser, we want to use level dot or dash JS instead. And so now we can go here to our server. We can run node index here and get out uh, the contents of our database or fire up our server here and run it here in our browser and get the same exact output uh, from a different database, but the same code. So I hope this has been a good intro to LevelDB for you. And if it has, then please share this video and help others get started with LevelDB. And if you want to see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.